Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for taking the time to come along to this uh, presentation by, by Atlas. Uh, my name's Colin Watt. I've worked in the height industry for, well, since the late 70s. And I've been linked to Atlas for uh, quite a few years now. Hopefully what we'll do today is to give you an idea of what Atlas as an organisation does, what their members do, and what their attitude is, what they do towards health and safety. So, first of all, who are Atlas? Association of Technical Lightning and Access Specialists. Uh, one of the leading organisations in the work at height industry. Founded in 1946 and therefore one of the oldest organisations in the height industry. Originally founded as the Master Steeplejacks and Lightning Conductor Engineers. However, the name was changed a few years back and the reason it was changed is quite simple. It's the perception of what the steeplejack does and how he does it. It's very much moved on, the expertise level is very much higher now, in particular towards health and safety. This is what people still in some quarters perceive how things are done. Uh, and this is going back very much to the, to the 40s. It's probably very much down to the media coverage to a certain gentleman a few years back. But we've moved on greatly since then. And this is how you would see uh, a height specialist nowadays. This is how you would expect to see them dressed. That's the type of PPE that they would be wearing, down to the harness, the gas monitor, the, the goggles, etc. In terms of what we do, or what Atlas do in the industry, there's a variety of structures that are worked on. Uh, encompasses basically all aspects of work at height. And if you look also within the list, you've now got wind turbines. So whilst you've got the traditional type structures, you've also got what's the more modern type structures. And Atlas member companies are involved in all that type of work. For example, uh, this is York Minster. Following the fire at the, the Minster a few years back, the first company that did any work at height was uh, an Atlas member on the basis they had to make it safe before anybody was allowed in, before they could do an assessment. And basically that member company had uh, operatives on site the morning of the fire uh, to assist at the Minster. The structures, for example, like the, the fourth rail bridge, where technically uh, it's been a, there's been some challenging uh, access situations that they've had to deal with. We have large process plants where they in turn bring their own hazards in terms of what happens on site. And we have public buildings in close proximity to uh, uh, people, the general public, and also process plants that are isolated but uh, contain hazards of a chemical nature or, or whatever. And also general buildings, universities, colleges, etc. Now, within all that, the services that are carried out is a list of services. Basically, anything at all relating to work at height normally begins with a, a, an inspection but carries right through to include demolition. And one aspect that's always been part of the ATLAS uh, criteria is lightning protection, which has really become uh, very advanced in the last few years in terms of what's expected. And there's certain health and safety elements that go along with that. And, in, and to encompass the, the industries that we, we are involved in, uh, petrochemical, etc., you'll see also uh, public authorities, rail services. That's it. It's basically the whole spectrum. So, to be an Atlas member, and in terms of health and safety, to keep that standard, if you like, uh, accredited co companies must fulfil and must maintain the high criteria that Atlas set. So Atlas aims is to improve working practices, technical quality and accepted standards. And the basis for that, as it is, is 
your all health and safety uh, practitioners or have an interest is fundamentally training. There's in-house training done by the companies. There's also a very strong link to the Steeplejack and Lightning Protection Training Group. And from that, the, they will assess and they will evaluate what skills are needed today and they will tailor courses accordingly for, uh, for the members. That was formed in 74, which seems quite some way away in terms of how long they've been training. But we actually, uh, on Pathé News at the moment, there's, there's film of a company, a, a member company, that had their own training school back in the 60s and had 140 people through it uh, in, in one year. So training's been part and parcel of what they've done for, for a very long time. Also, uh, it provides a national system for training and apprenticeships. Apprenticeships are fundamental to the, this industry in particular because the, a young person is always more vulnerable than anybody else. So, uh, ideally, we like to get them through an apprenticeship in the first instance. That's followed up with competence. They'll probably all have definitions of competence, but uh, as well as the experience and the knowledge, etc., that the operatives will have, member companies must be registered with uh, the CITB uh, construction skills and employ CSCS cardholders. That, again, is part and parcel of the, the membership. The other thing that Atlas do is to provide documents, both technical and of a uh, health and safety type. Quite a variety of these documents are available at the moment, and where it's health and safety, where possible, it will be endorsed by the health and safety executive. Currently, this is the latest document that uh, will be available from Atlas. It's a new type now, it's a new generation. Eh? A guides, if you like, the link to health and safety. It's a bit more comprehensive and it's geared up also that the operatives are able to use it as a guide, but also so do clients, so that you have a better understanding of what the, the industry does. And just to show how much effort went into this document, uh, Atlas themselves carried out tests in relation to fall protection equipment on the use of ladders. And the latest document that's uh, just underway now is for safe use of power-operated winch winches in the access industry. We often get asked about rope access. Do we still use rope access? Yes, we do. Uh, it's as used much now as it ever did. As it ever, uh, did. But on the basis it's used now uh, normally as a means to an end. An example here, uh, uh, this is lightning protection work where they still are heavily involved in using rope access for, for that type of work. But equally, it can be used in, on major projects. Uh, it can be used as an assist, as opposed to being the main source of access. Work at height regulations that you'll all be familiar with, 2005, amended 2007. Uh, did that make a difference to the industry? Well. One of the main things, the, the, the hierarchy, if you like, at uh, work at height, avoid work. How could that be done with the type of work that Atlas members do? This is St Pancras Station. A uh, member company was tasked or asked if they could provide uh, a means of removing what you see on the roof there, the sheets, the gangways, the whole thing, without using a tower crane and on the basis if that wasn't available. How could they do it? Could they do it safely? And what was done was to create a system. And that system, rather than attempt to do the work initially on the roof itself, it was built at ground level, it was tested at ground level, and then subsequently it was used on site and it was used successfully. But there were other, other problems on the site. So they asked if the Atlas member could look at the problem that they couldn't put collective fall protection on a site like this. It's too difficult. So they said, could we do something with uh, personal fall protection? So the, the company came up with a solution. And again, what they did was it was done at ground level first. 
equally with that facility. That facility was then available to train the people that were going to use the system. So is anybody coming on the site for the first time that was going to use that system was actually taken at ground level and shown how to use the, the system. One challenging one was the aircraft control or airport control tower at East Midlands, where uh, normally that would have been done using quite a, a sort of conventional scaffolding, heavy lifts, etc. Avoiding work at height, what the company did was actually devised the system where that part of the tower was built at ground level and then it was actually jacked up into place. Another feature was on a structure where scaffolding could be dif difficult. So the company designed a suspended platform uh, where the access for the operatives was via Alimac hoist and subsequently onto the platform, which was fully enclosed, which reduced the time that they actually worked at height. Another one is where, where Atlas members build scaffolds, it's specifically for them as a company. It's unusual to build a scaffold for somebody else, and they tailor the scaffold to suit the work that they actually do. In this case, because of a security problem, they wanted a scaffold only at the level where work was to be carried out. And on that basis, they were able to use a unique system where the scaffold went in at the highest level. So that's innovation in terms of avoiding work at height. So has the work at height regs had an effect on us? Have we done that because of the work at height regs, etc.? Well, there's the answer. If you ignore the scaffold, the fact that companies have been using innovation for many, many years. In this case, the top of the spire was actually built at ground level to ensure everything was in place the way it was supposed to be designed and ultimately avoid the need to work at height. But there's other innovations which are technical innovations. The barrel shed at the St Pancras uh, the walkways that you see in the top of the picture there, the top of the walkway, in fact, that's not the handrail, that's above head height. So each unit weighed five ton, and to remove the unit safely, you weren't allowed, because it's a listed structure, to connect onto the original structure. So it was very, very limited. However, the, the company came up with a technique, uh, a height saver, if you like, and introduced a system for this job that meant the work was carried out safely. The lads that were involved in it uh, were able to work safely and it was brought down to a, a, a safe level. There's also, we've encountered in the past, there's been problems in the use of flare stacks, uh, removing the tips, etc., using cranes. Sometimes it's difficult for a crane to actually be uh, put in place and what one, of the, what one of the companies have done is to come up with a solution where instead of using a crane uh, they designed a, a davit system particularly for removing the, the tip and then took it a stage further with a different type of davit. It's not a simple solution because when you use a structure like that as a lifting device, it changes the nature of the structure and in turn it means that under the lower regs you then have to review what it is that that structure is actually doing. So it's not, it's, it's not an easy way of doing things but it shows that options are uh, considered uh, by the companies. And another, another one here was using a davit, a uh, similar system but it was also done on the basis that Work had to be carried out within uh, a structure that was uh, under heat, and what was done is a temporary, a temporary structure was built alongside it to allow that work to, to be carried out. There's also, we've used uh, nowadays, uh, 
We like, where possible, to use as much information as we can to pass on to both clients and operatives. And for, the, for a job putting up a, a suspended platform onto a, a vessel as opposed to scaffold, then this system, if you like, was used. That's the drone that was put in place to do it. Whereas nowadays, we go for 3D drawings. And there's a bigger benefit there for the clients. Uh, there's a benefit for the operatives in terms of uh, what you actually see there is what would be used on that particular project. And we can take it a stage further by showing how, how it would look in terms of the operatives actually on the scaffold, along with the plant itself, like say generators, uh, welding plant, etc. And it gives a good idea as to how the whole thing actually is going to appear on site, including the Alamac hoist. We use that as well for uh, suspended platforms. And that's how we would, that's how a, a suspended platform jo job has been shown. That's how it actually appears with the components at the top, suspended section, the cradle itself of the platform, and then in this case, a fan protection to protect people working underneath. The, the platforms themselves are, are large enough that any type of work within reason can be carried out from them. In terms of scaffolding, we have underslung scaffolds and more conventional but built at a higher level and that still allows a great deal of work that can be carried out. Innovation in terms of demolition, that's always been a problem in the past because we've had uh, operatives on a demolition where they're subject to vibration, uh, subject to uh, extensive operations, heavy operations. This unit was devised initially uh, with an operator on the unit and in turn that was removed and it's now uh, remote controlled. Custom design systems, here's a suspended platform uh, and steady in the past, tube and fitting components etc uh, that had to be dismantled, directed every time. It's basically a system that can be moved along the top of the structure as the work is carried out. How safe are you? Now, there will be people here today in terms of health and safety that may want to on site go and look at what work is being carried out. You need to make sure that you're quite comfortable with that. If you're going, to, if you're going on site, it's imperative that the caliber of the company that you're working alongside at height is high because they've got to look after your interests as well. You, prob you probably have a knowledge or some amount of knowledge about working at height. Make sure that you have sufficient knowledge when you actually go onto a site. For example, one of the problems that's often inherent in uh, a health and safety person coming on site is the difference between fall arrest and work restraint, for example. If you're going onto a site and you're going to be involved in that, you should know what the differences are. And if you're not sure, then it's important you have a good company that will look after your, your safety while you're on site. For example, if you turn up on an ordinary site like this, uh, the type of faults that you'll find, you probably, those that are familiar with scaffolds, would be able to point out the fact that the ladder isn't high enough, it's not secure enough, it's in the wrong position. Now that's fairly straightforward. Good companies will use devices like this and that's what you should be looking for, and that's the type of thing that Atlas member companies would be putting in place on their sites. However, back to the 3D, there's different forms of access, and we'll have situations where this is a gondola, and health and safety practitioners often are quite happy to say, I'll, 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 I'll become involved here, 
I want to go and I want to have a look at the job. If you're going to do that, it's important you realise that all these scenarios, there's a problem with rescue. You must be able to be rescued. And whilst that may look, well, to some people it may look okay at ground level, to others maybe not so. However, in real terms, that's where you're going. And some, some people are quite happy at height, they're quite comfortable at height, but at the end of the day, if a rescue has to take place there, not only you, do you have to be comfortable at height, you must feel comfortable with the rescue. And that one is a very, very tricky operation. Equally, a lot of the access that's been done by the member companies involves going onto roofs. That always seems quite straightforward. It's not. As you've probably, probably seen from the statistics earlier, falls from height from roofs is a major problem. And whilst that system there, it looks OK, it has flaws in it. So it's important if you don't have the knowledge that the company you're going along with has the knowledge on your behalf. That's why we say that uh, we look for you to use member companies. That's almost it in terms of Atlas. So hopefully today, uh, you come to a, an event like this, we do hope that you actually you learn something and you pick, some, pick, pick something up. If you don't, uh, well, if I can use somebody else's words uh, in this one, some, some, some of you may have heard this before. There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. Now, hopefully you understood that. So, on the basis that you're here today and you might be going away and there's something you don't know, that's because we didn't know what you don't know. So, if there's something that you know you don't know. If you come back here at 12.30, the panel from the AIF will have a question and answer service. Equally, you can contact Atlas on the website or there's a stand over there where representatives will be available. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for coming.